this cruise ship fell victim to an attack by the Mani pirates. Along the coast of Somalia, a group of pirates in fast boats approached the massive cruise ship, weighing 102,000 tons and measuring 273 meters in length, with 2,720 passengers on board. The pirates intended to hijack the ship, its crew, and passengers, holding them hostage until a substantial ransom was paid. This incident occurred in broad daylight with 8 to 13 boats zigzagging in front of the ship. The pirate strategy involved attempting to slow down the ship and board it. Another piracy attempt took place around 11 p.m. the following night. Passengers were aware of the danger in these waters and had received a letter instructing them on how to prepare for such situations. The letter advised passengers that if pirates managed to board the ship, they should follow instructions over the speakers and go to a designated safe area for lockdown. The European origin cruise ship was adequately prepared with everything on board for defense. Passengers in external cabins were required to keep their lights off, creating a blackout. External decks were equipped with water cannons and were off-limits to all passengers. Even the upper decks, typically lively with nighttime activities, were quieter than a church on a non-worship day. When thinking of pirates, we often envision fictional characters like Captain Hook, Jack Sparrow, or the Pirates of Penzance. However, modern pirates are far from these romanticized figures. They are determined and dangerous individuals willing to terrorize passengers and crew members to get what they want. Armed with AK-47s and a ruthless attitude, these modern pirates, often young and desperate, venture out to sea in their small fast boats fearlessly confronting massive ships weighing over 150,000 tons. Labeling them as mere opportunistic mercenaries seeking treasures would be an oversimplification. Modern piracy is a highly organized and lucrative industry involving significant sums of money and calculated risks. Originating in Somalia in the early 1990s in response to the devastation caused by the civil war, modern piracy has evolved into sophisticated enterprises. According to Oliver Taylor from Listverse, there are approximately 72 pirate groups that can be seen as maritime businesses. These groups operate similarly to public companies, with investors contributing money or equipment, such as weapons, hoping for substantial returns in case of a successful hijacking. Most of the money goes to these investors rather than the individuals in the boats facing the imposing cargo ships. These foot soldiers typically receive a modest amount ranging from $30,000 to $75,000, and those who bring their own ladder and weapon may receive an additional grant of $10,000. While this money holds significant value in places like Somalia, it falls short of the millions paid in ransoms. When a pirate targets a ship, there are six possible outcomes, number one, failure to capture the ship, two, the ship successfully repels the pirate's attack, number three, the ship is released after paying the ransom, 4. The ship may be released without the ransom, Number 5. The ship and its crew are rescued, as seen in the movie Captain Phillips, or Number 6. An unknown outcome, which can be uncertain due to the complex nature of piracy but is often terrifying. Now, let's consider how piracy unfolds. A maritime company secures investors and sends pirate soldiers who identify a potential target. These pirates, often working in groups using fast boats, employ a two-pronged strategy. Some attempt to slow down the target ship by maneuvering in a zigzag pattern in front of it, while others approach from the sides to board. If the pirates successfully capture the ship, they take it back near the coast of Somalia and initiate ransom negotiations. Many times, pirates engage in a game of patience, holding and terrorizing hostages for up to six months. Hostages receive basic necessities through donations from investors. However, pirates primarily value the cargo over the crew, so they may resort to violence if necessary or if passengers and crew become uncooperative. There's also a chance that pirates may release hostages and return the ship, as in a business, everything depends on what the most profitable decision is. If representatives of these ship kidnapping companies were to appear on Shark Tank seeking new investors, it would be strangely fitting, and their proposal would be seriously considered from an investor's standpoint. The initial cost of a kidnapping attempt is only the fuel expense, with potential for multi-million dollar payouts. However, the probability of hitting the ransom jackpot is quite low. Analyzing statistics summing up 230 attacks since 2005, 
The results are as follows, 42 capture attempts failed, and pirates eventually gave up and departed. 16 attacks were repelled by the crew and or passengers. 84 ships were released after being captured without any ransom paid. 27 cases fall into the unknown category, and 40 instances resulted in a successful payment to the pirates, indicating a success rate of 17.4%. This means there is an 82.6% chance of not getting a return on investment in any pirate attack. However, when a successful attack occurs, the rewards are substantial. According to an article from the Board of Innovation, in just 2010, $148 million was paid in ransoms to pirates. Interestingly, insurers emerge as the real winners, receiving 10 times more than the pirates themselves. In that same year, $1.85 billion was paid for piracy coverage. It's worth noting that the International Maritime Bureau reported that 1,181 people were taken hostage in Somali waters in 2010. However, according to this article, only one ransom was paid to Somali pirates that year, indicating someone got rich. The risk of a cruise ship being attacked or hijacked by pirates is generally low. Pirates primarily target cargo ships due to their valuable cargo, and small crewed cruise ships present a more complex situation. While pirates have attacked various types of vessels, incidents involving cruise ships are relatively rare. The level of risk also depends on the navigation route, the statistics mentioned in the article specifically apply to incidents in the Gulf of Aden, also known as the pirate route, standing out as a high-risk zone, the most dangerous area in terms of piracy worldwide. Out of 230 recorded attacks, only 6 were directed at cruise ships, and none resulted in a successful hijacking. A known incident occurred in 2005 and the Seaborne Spirit was targeted in a hijack attempt. Ladies and gentlemen, dear gentlemen, all ships stay inside, stay inside, stay inside. We are trying to stay ashore. This is a, a real alarm, please stay inside. Although the attempt was unsuccessful, it drew attention due to recorded images and media coverage. However, it was not the most dramatic hijack attempt, as other cruise ships faced gunfire, and one even endured a grenade attack. However, pirates failed to board the cruise ship with passengers on board. In 2009, when one of these attacks was successful, and pirates managed to capture a cruise ship, they promptly released it upon realizing there were no passengers on board. Private yachts are more vulnerable than cruise ships, with eight reported attacks, some resulting in fatalities. However, most yachts are either rescued or released without ransom after a period of captivity. In a notable incident in 2011, the crew of a Taiwanese yacht reacted to an attack by throwing pirates overboard and successfully escaping. Even military ships have been targeted by pirates. Some pirates have attempted to board and capture military ships, but these encounters usually end unfavorably for the pirates. In a 2006 case, a US military ship was invaded, resulting in the capture of 12 pirates and the death of one. Once pirates realize they have invaded a military ship, they quickly retreat to avoid further consequences. The chances of a pirate attack during a cruise have significantly decreased in recent years. From 2008 to 2011, there were 200 recorded pirate attacks in the Gulf of Aden, with the highest number occurring in 2009 or 2010. However, the situation has improved since then. The pirate route, the waters in the Gulf of Aden, is now closely monitored by task forces composed of international naval personnel. This increased presence seems to have deterred pirates, with only two incidents reported in 2017 and only one in 2018. The efforts of these task forces have had a significant impact on reducing pirate activity in the region. Cruise ships employ various tactics to protect themselves from pirate attacks, using both defensive and offensive strategies. Defensive strategies aim to minimize the chances of pirates successfully capturing the ship, including implementing blackout conditions, closing decks, and reducing noise to avoid detection. In the event of an attack, Passengers are directed to safe areas such as the theater and restaurants to keep them away from direct contact with pirates. On the offensive side, cruise ships have several options that increase based on the severity of the situation. At the lower end, the captain can employ evasive maneuvers such as zigzagging or increasing speed to outmaneuver pirates. 
High-pressure hoses are also prepared to deter attackers by knocking them off their ladders. Additionally, long-range acoustic devices can be used, emitting powerful sound waves that can cause auditory damage at a distance. In more extreme cases, cruise ships have trained sniper teams on board. These snipers, dressed in black outfits similar to ninjas and armed with snipers and assault rifles, remain hidden unless there is a need to act. Some crew members may also have specialized combat training, but their identities remain unknown until needed. By combining these defensive and offensive measures, cruise ships aim to ensure the safety of their passengers and crew in the face of potential pirate threats. In a notable encounter on the MSC Melody in 2009, passengers noticed a small boat approaching the ship after attending a gala concert. The crew was immediately alerted, and passengers, still dressed in their elegant attire, used tables and chairs to prevent attackers from boarding. Although pirates fired shots at the passengers, they eventually gave up and left. Fortunately, no passengers were injured during this incident. It is important to note that taking control of the situation, as the passengers did in this case, is not recommended or expected when following established procedures and taking defensive measures. Cruise ships aim to repel pirate attacks and ensure the safety of everyone on board. So, what happened during the pirate's money attack? Fortunately, the situation was resolved without causing harm to the Australian passengers on board, who were prepared to defend themselves, including throwing bread rolls if necessary. However, in the end, their assistance was not needed. The captain acted quickly by accelerating the ship, forcing the pirates to retreat. Although the cruise ship and most of the crew did not officially acknowledge the incident, a crew member confirmed its occurrence. When questioned about the incident, Many crew members dismissed it as mere gossip and asked if there was any photographic evidence. In fact, we also have not fully disclosed the details of the incident. In the end, the ship managed to avoid the pirates, and the situation was resolved, allowing everyone on board to continue their journey safely. Make sure to click the like button and subscribe. If you want to watch more videos like this, I suggest the one on your screen now. See you there.